Now that the System 8000 scanner is configured for a 5000 ohm quarter bridge input, I need to go in and file. It's going to accommodate both it and the 350 ohm quarter bridge gauge. I'm going to utilize the project wizard. I don't mean this to be a dissertation on how to uh, use the Strain Smart software or the System 8000. I'm simply using it as a vehicle to do a 5000 ohm strain gauge demonstration. <clears throat> so Strain Smart allows me to declare the types of sensors that I'm inputting. I'm going to call one of them to be a uh, the 5000 ohm strain gauge. I'm going to utilize the, the slot for what's supposed to be a 1,000 ohm quarter bridge. We know that I've changed it out to be 5,000 ohms. And I have an opportunity to introduce the gauge type, the lot number, code, item code, and the batch, which would give you traceability if your engineering data sheet wasn't filed very well going forward. I'm also going to add a 350 ohm gauge on another channel. I'm going to leave gauge factors at two. I'm going to keep the excitation voltage low at one. And that basically is going to pretty much complete my connection or my setup to the scanner for my sensors. Now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to uh, go ahead and connect to the scanner. It just takes a second for the software to do a handshake, make sure everything is, is as expected and the communication is good. I get the green light, and now I'm going to tie the sensors that I've created with each channel. So on the first channel, I have a whole lot of choices that are going on here. Most importantly, I'm going to choose the 5,000 ohm strain gauge to be on channel one as a quarter bridge with a one volt excitation. If you want to discuss things with us regarding um, strain gauges and the into uh, uh, one of our data acquisition systems, we can talk to you about other factors which are going to be uh, such values as um, or such corrections that for temperature uh, effects that are on both the gauge factor and the thermal output of the strain gauge. One other thing that I have to be careful of is that with a, a thousand ohm quarter bridge, the shunt calibration resistor that's internal on the scanner is going to simulate 10,000 microstrain. The software will give me a warning if it doesn't find that. Well, if you remember now, I've swapped out that 1,000 ohm bridge completion for a 5,000 ohm bridge completion. And now what I wind up needing having to do is to tell it that after calculating it, that that same shunt cal resistor value is going to generate a strain of about 47,976 when it's on a 5,000 ohm dummy. I'm still shunting the dummy because I want to take care of any lead wire resistance. What I'm going to learn very quickly is that with the 5,000 ohm strain gauge, the effects of the lead wire resistance really go away, even if there's a significant amount. So I'm going to take my other 350 ohm sensor. I'm going to wind up uh, assigning it to um, channel number two. I'm going to leave everything else the same because it's expecting a 350 ohm gauge and the shunt calibration procedure will find um, hopefully the correct value if there's not any mistakes either with um, the strain gauge connection or uh, the shunt calibration process itself. So now that I've got two strain gauges that are connected, I'm going to create a scan session. Again, not trying to get too deeply into what the Strain Smart software will do, but with the scan session, it'll default to the sensors that I've in included so far. And then it asks me about how fast I want to scan. Now, I don't want to go screaming fast, but 10 samples a second is a little small. I'm going to choose 100 samples a second, and I'm going to tell it that I want to record. There's a lots of options here in which you can capture pre-sample or pre-count before something happens, trip levels. You can have it not record things for days, hours, weeks, and then do a real fast burst at some point, or do a fast burst when something happens. I am pretty much know that I'm finished here, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to finish up. When I then go to check out functionally my strain gauges, the first step I want to do typically is going to ask the strain gauges to zero. The system with one quick little push of a button here has gone and balanced out each of the channels. There's no errors reported. Then I'm going to ask it to perform a shunt calibration. The shunt calibration, if you're not familiar with it, it's paralleling in a very precise known resistance that creates a very precise known strain level. And as I did in the previous screen, I told it what to expect. If it goes and makes the measurement and it finds something dramatically different, it's going to report that back to me. 
Here it's saying it's finding a lead wire resistance in channel number two of about a half an ohm. And so it's doing a slight correction to my gauge factor to correct for the lead wire resistance and the signal loss. We call that the modified gauge factor. The lead wire resistance found on the 5,000 ohm gauge, however, is really rounding off, basically zero. So it's not finding anything. So now at this point, I'm good to go ahead and make a measurement. I can tell the system to go ahead and arm. And once it arms, it does a final check to make sure everything's copacetic with the hardware and the software, that nothing has changed, nothing's been unplugged, everything's communicating well. And then I can tell it to go ahead and start scanning. And as it scans, I can wind up going in and monitoring what the strain levels are, uh, either with a strip chart or a numerical table, et cetera. And we can see what's going on with each of the strain gauges. So here I can just simply tell it, I wanna look at all the strain gauges here and just throw it on a table for me for now. I'll plot something interesting later. And as you can see right now, my strains are just simply bouncing around between zero and one count of microstrain.